we're back. Another another day, another stereotype that is causing havoc in the black community. Today is the Auntie Mena. If you ever heard of her or had her damn pancakes, smash that subscribe button. Let's get into this conversation. All right, so I'm going to read it, and then we're going to talk about it, period. <laughs> anyway, the Unjamema. The stereotype of Unjamema evolved out of the mammy image. She differs from the mammy, though, because her duties were restricted to cooking. It was, though, Unjamema, it was through Unjamema the association of the African-American woman with domestic work, especially cooking, became fixed in the minds of society. As a result, hundreds of Unjamema collectibles found their way into American kitchens, and these black collectibles included grocery list holders, salt and pepper shakers, spoon holders, stove top sets, flower scoops, spatulas, mixing bowls, match holders, teapots, hot pad holders, and a whole bunch of more stuff. Perhaps Unjamema's most famous image is on that pancake advertisement campaign. Um, she was chosen as a new name for a self rising pancake mix because it just naturally made me think of good cooking. Obviously, others agreed because the campaign was an instant success. Rutt sold his company to Davis Milling Co., which shows Nancy Green as the Unjamema product spokesperson. This character developed a loyal following of both blacks and whites. To these people, Unjamema had become reality. Her face still can be found on the pancake boxes today, although her image has changed slightly. The stereotype does live on. The Unjamema... The Unjamema stereotype has been the, the reason that black soul food restaurants continue to rock, okay? Because we be like, oh, it is a black woman up in that kitchen, and I trust her with my food. That is that's like the that is the pervasive message of the Aunt Jamema role. The idea that all black women can cook, okay? When you know, when you know, and I know, we both know, we done been to a couple of gatherings and cookouts where we was like, uh-uh, because this tastes like ass. So, <laughs> I think that what happens is if you can't cook, you feel like you're inadequate, like you're not living up to the ideas and ideologies of what a black woman should be, but also... If you can cook, your role and all that you do and all of your values are almost reduced to this one pastime, which is important, but also you are much more than the ability to cook. But I think that's where that under mama thing lands today is that black women being at kitchen, cooking and throwing down, whether it's true or false, the expectation remains can you cook me a meal? And if you can't, some somehow, some way, we need to revoke your black card. Or black people have bit more flavoring in their food. Their food has more seasoning. Then it even reverses itself to white people can't cook, right? Because the thing about the stereotypes that run through the black population, they tend to affect white people too. So that's why we have all these jokes about how white people can't cook. And we say that they only use salt and pepper and that black people can't eat with them and y'all can't come to cookout and all this other stuff, right? The racial dynamics that live in America have these ongoing effects that affect black people, but also affect other people around them, right? We The big joke is now all over across social media is white people can't cook and they only use salt and pepper and they don't season their food and they don't understand flavor. And we even seen the whole... Oh, a black person's coming to dinner or a white person's coming to dinner and we laugh as they as they chew their food and watch them because we want their validation to say, yes, this person can cook or no, it's not valid. But it's really all jumping back to the stereotype of what food should taste like, who should be cooking it and what they should look like when they're doing it. Because most of the time they're looking for a big black woman in the kitchen sweating with a headscarf and that's when they say, oh, that food finna be bomb. All right, now, that's my last go. Um, the next time we come, then we have a few more stereotypes to talk about. The Sapphire, the Jezebel. The Sapphire and the Jezebel. Two more to talk about. We'll get into them. I ain't going to leave y'all hanging. I'll see you tomorrow.